<laughs> use the time we, we have. <laughs> so, um, bonjour, buenos dias, Calimera, and a uh, guten tag uh, to, to everybody in this session on financing models. Uh, my name is Elsa. I'm from the Cusanus College, which is kind of a university in, um, in Germany. And I'm myself, I'm uh, on, at the at Cusanus, we're doing some research on the socio-ecological transformation um, of the financing sector. So very curious and very honored to, to chair this uh, session. Um, so we've heard like in the keynotes, uh, we've heard a lot about what uh, political decision makers um, are doing or should be doing <laughs> or shouldn't. <laughs> and um, in this uh, breakout session, we're going to like kind of switch a bit the perspective and talk more from the bottom up and from a practical um, experience of uh, different organizations in solidarity economics and the focus is on financing models. Um, and I'm very happy to have such great um, experts here. And I'd like to say um, hello and a warm welcome to Alexandre Lafon uh, from Energy Partagé, um, Panayotis Tornavites from the Cooperative Bank of Cardiza in Greece. And we have Raymond Gassiot Baibé from Coop 57 in Barcelona. And I hope I, I managed not to, to totally mispronounce your names. <laughs> um, it's very great to have all of you here. And um, I'm not going to like uh, present uh, what you're doing uh, in detail because I think you, you do a better job at that. <laughs> so we'll have um, a round of, of uh, self presentations um, in a few minutes. But before that, first, I'd also like to, to welcome uh, um, yeah, the audience in front of their screens. Um, if you are um, yeah, uh, willing to do so, you're, you're welcome to, to turn on your camera because it kind of changes the, the feeling of this of conference, uh, but uh, it's not a necessity, um, but it would be great uh, to see some of you as well. And you're welcome to use the, the chat function so as I said, we're going to start with a little round of presentations of the speakers we have. And then um, we'll have a um, discussion among the four of us just to learn about the different um, experience and experts and um, expertise and best case or maybe some issues that different organizations um, are having. And um, then there's also some room to, to open up to the audience. So you're welcome, as I said, to use the chat and give your comments and, and raise your questions. Right, so I'd like to um, hand over to, to Alexandra and um, yeah, the floor is yours. And we would be yeah, curious and happy to learn a bit about yourself and your organization, what you're doing, what are your like hot topics you're onto at the moment. And um, yeah. Thank you, Elsa. So nice to meet everyone here. Uh, my name is Alexandra and I work for Energie Partagée which is a federation of local energy cooperatives in France. We are working at the European level with uh, rescop.eu, if you, if you know them. Um, and basically our movement uh, supports citizens and local authorities to um, create a new renewable energy production um, power plants everywhere in France. And we are trying to, to spread this movement across France. So now we are supporting around 200 uh, projects in France. Uh, from the, the idea of the project to really the, the, the installation, the creation of the power plant with the citizens and the local authorities, which is quite great to see such a community of local stakeholders around uh, an energy project because energy has been uh, invisible for years in France uh, once we had nuclear power plants producing our electricity in a centralized way and now we can all be uh, producers of our own um, electricity and uh, energy with also uh, biogas. Uh, so that's basically what we are doing. We have two um, tools 
for that. Uh, one is the association for which I am working. Uh, the association is providing support to these uh, citizens and uh, local authorities uh, in developing the, the project that can be uh, support on uh, technical, economic, legal aspects, but also in communication and citizen mobilization uh, for the project, um, because we are basically asking uh, citizens of, uh, of the region to finance um, the project, which is not happening without uh, uh, the, the state or the, the local uh, authorities. So the, the citizens are by themselves building a project and financing it. Uh, it's quite difficult, of course, citizens are not energy experts, they are not uh, financing experts, but they can become uh, the, the, the experts of their own projects if they are really willing it for it. Um, it, is, it is also possible thanks to 10 local networks of animation which are on field and I used to be one of these uh, animation people on the on the ground with the, the local authorities and the citizens uh, having um, uh, nights uh, working on the, the project and it's also uh, possible thanks to uh, capitalization of all the tools and resources of uh, su successful projects uh, in the past, which are sharing with the others. So this is the experience sharing in the networks and also the, the trainings we can provide that can really help the projects happen. And the other tool that we have is a national cooperative, which is uh, collecting money from citizens that cannot be uh, volunteers in a, in a project because they have other stuff to do with their life, but they are willing to contribute and they are willing to mobilize their spare money to finance projects anywhere in France. And that is possible right now since 2010 we collected around 26.5 million euros um, from 6,500 citizen shareholders which are uh, individuals only um, and with this money we financed around 70 projects already uh, which are very uh, various uh, it can be wind farms it can be solar farms it can be solar rooftops on schools it's very uh, diverse and interesting to see that these projects are happening thanks to the people that are really building it and we are happy to help them do that Great, thank you, Alexandra. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we start with a, we, we just finish this round and then we dig a bit deeper into the different projects. This sounds very interesting. Uh, Panos, wh what about you? What's, what's your organization doing? Yes, uh, thank you, Elsa. And I would also like to thank uh, Heinrich Bell Stiftum for the honor and the opportunity to present uh, our bank, Cooperative Bank of Cardiza, to your very interesting uh, conference. So I am the CEO of the Cooperative Bank of Karditsa, and for those that are not keen with Greek geography, Karditsa is in the very center of Greece in the region of Thessaly. Our bank was established in 1994 and we operate as a fully regulated financial institution since 1998. Apart from our administrative offices, we currently have four branches, which branch network we plan to extend very soon. Uh, we have close to 12,000 members and we serve a clientele of more than 25,000 clients. Our customers are primarily small medium enterprises, local farmers, producers, and small commercial enterprises. Our overall market share in our region is a little above 12%, and in SMEs is above 25%. So during this, uh, all these years of, of operation, many things have changed. The economy has made several cycles. Even if the last decade, Greece is trying to rebound from a very harsh financial crisis, but one thing that haven't been the altar is our dedication to our mission, which is no other than to enhance access to finance for our communities and provide adequate uh, financial instruments to the SMEs of our region. All these 26 uh, years of operation, we never had a year of losses. So that means that we have consecutive years of positive results and all these years we operate based and relying only in our own powers. For us, crisis was a big opportunity to showcase the necessity and the important role a cooperative bank can have. So, can has, and this is why all our key figures have more than double over the period of the Greek crisis from 2010 to 2020. For example, our total assets have increased 
to 160 million, so an increase of 123%. Our loans, total loans, have increased to 112, uh, 102 million, increased by 250%. Deposits, despite the fact that we have successfully managed two bank runs and uh, you know that have occurred in Greece and ultimately capital controls were enforced, uh, have rise to 142 million, increased by 342%. So we have never received the received the state aid in any form, and we are one of the few, if not the only, uh, bank in Greece that never needed or was forced to uh, recapitalization. Uh, our bank has never been involved or received funds through European Emergency Liquidity Assistance, and over time. Uh, we hold one of the highest, if not the highest, capital and liquidity indexes among uh, Greek banks. Uh, also, we have a very close cooperation with EU institutions and banks, such as the European Investment Fund, with whom we collaborate in many financial instruments. We are now starting a new venture with the, with the Bank of uh, Council of Europe, uh, the first agreement of its kind to be signed in Greece. And through all this collaboration, we try to drive financial resources and improve access to finance conditions in a logical and responsible way. Uh, this is why, on the other hand, uh, our bank is a proud member of associations such as the European Association of Ethical and Atlantic Banks, in which I have the honor to be also a board member, the Global Alliance for Banking on Value and the European's Microfinance Network, so as to adapt to best practices and services and promote ethical and responsible banking. So one can easily ask himself, uh, how are all these possible by a small cooperative bank? So the short answer to that is that we constantly work by principles of ethical and responsible banking. For us, client and not profit is the center of our operation. We never turned our back to the ones in need during crisis. We offer to our clients a wide range of products and services. We work for the good of our members and community and not vice versa. We also never give bonuses to staff or executive for achieving sales goals. So in that sense, we don't promote a salesman culture for our executives and our bank. We have an open doors policy. So board members and executive can be directly reached by any member. And for us, ethics and not metrics is what matters first. And yes, uh, ethical and banking can be in the same sentence. For us, ethics is know the difference between what you have a right to do and what is right to do. So I hope I've managed to give you an idea of who we are, what we do, and what is the way we serve our mission. Thank you very much, Panos, as well. Yeah, it's like the, the, the aim of this session is to inspire and encourage and to illustrate. And I think we've, we've already started to do that. So, so thank you very much. Um, Raimon, what about you and um, your cooperation? Maybe you could um, tell us a bit about what you're doing and um, yeah, what's, your, um, what's the, the goal of your, of your work and so the floor is yours. Guten Tag. Uh, Guten Tag. <laughs> good afternoon. Thank you for inviting us uh, to this really interesting conference. Uh, I'm sorry, my English is not as well as uh, I wish, uh, but uh, I tried to explain uh, um, our experience. Uh, um, I, I worked for, for COP57. COP57 is a, a financial cooperative which uh, is in, in Spain. It's a financial and ethical and solidarity financial cooperative uh, who uh, collects uh, popular saving in order to uh, mobilize this money uh, to finance only uh, social and solidarity enterprises. Okay, uh, we are not a bank. We are a financial cooperative. Uh, we don't have uh, customers. We only work with uh, our partners. And the partners uh, are uh, 
people who uh, who are uh, who put uh, uh, their savings uh, to our cooperative, and the other partners are the social and solidarity organizations. Uh, for us, it's very important uh, that uh, this uh, kind of organization contribute to uh, transform uh, a social and ecological and feminist transformation. Our goal is uh, to finance this uh, transformation. Okay, uh, we have uh, a thousand partners organizations uh, of uh, the social and solidarity organizations and 4,600 uh, people who uh, put their uh, savings in our cooperative. Uh, this cooperative, uh, uh, the origins are in, in Catalonia, uh, but uh, uh, we have uh, a development in network in some uh, regions of, of Spain. We have uh, seven uh, territorial sections in Catalonia, Aragon, Madrid, uh, Basque Country, uh, Galicia, Andalusia, and Asturias. Each uh, territorial section uh, can self-manage uh, uh, the, the organization. We have uh, the same principles, the same uh, financial uh, products, uh, but each uh, section have uh, the possibility to decide which uh, organization we finance. Okay? Uh, and is it, uh, we have uh, an amount of uh, more of uh, 40 million of savings and the the outstanding loan balance is uh, over uh, uh, it's over uh, I think now it's over uh, 24 25 million euros uh, and this is uh, the experience of uh, COP 57 we call a we've take part of, of FEDEA, the, the European Federation of uh, Bank uh, Ethical and Alternative. Uh, and this, uh, we can explain more of uh, our experience uh, later. Thank you so much. So time is already running very fast. <laughs> and thank you much uh, for your presentation. So we have like two, cooperators with Alexandre and Ramon, the presenters of them, um, like you collect money, right? And then you, you distribute it to, to different social ecological uh, projects. And as Ramon has um, presented, like you, you, it's not like a, um, it's not centrally planned, but you have like a, a more local organization form, right? I, I, got, I got this right, perfect, yeah. And, and Panos is, um, is working with a um, cooperative bank, right? So this is kind of a bit of a, um, a difference. Um, Panos, how, how did this get started? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it started rather small. Uh, it's like it was a credit union. It, was, uh, it started from a, from a single person that had the idea that uh, we can create a, a financial institution in our region that will take a, a use local saving as a leverage for uh, improving access to finance for all all community so it started back in 1994 as a rather small idea but rather fast it, it gained a popular uh, uh, trust and uh, I would say that the, the, the tipping point into this initiative uh, was uh, the Greek crisis, when uh, the necessity and the importance of a, of a cooperative bank 
a bank that uh, fully understands the specific needs of the local community and the specific projects that can can really make and have a social impact into and to improve people's life. Uh, so it was the the, the time that uh, we have proven, uh, let's say, the, the values of uh, and the importance of the cooperative uh, of the cooperative uh, bank. So I will say that I, I will dare to say that uh, in our area, if it wasn't for our bank, the the, the financial landscape in our region would be a completely different one than the one that it, it is today. So. So the initiative really did make a difference, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, let's say a new a, a new world is only a new mind. Yeah, you know. Yes. <laughs> um we like the the um, the whole conference is about um the EU Green Deal. So I'd like to to have a bit of your thoughts on what the EU is doing to support cooperatives um at, at the local level. And maybe you could also like touch upon what, what do you think is, is special about this? local initiatives and and what why are they very important for for sustain, sustainability shift or social ecological transformation alexander what's what's your thought on this well in re, in regard of uh, energy um topics the eu is very proactive and is uh, showing the way opening the way for the member states so it's really important for us to to follow what is discussed at the eu level so that we can also uh, influence the, the, the european directives and uh, have uh, access to opportunities because thanks to this uh, um, directives. For example, regarding uh, energy transition, the EU had uh, two um, promoted two directives uh, that introduced the notion of energy communities uh, in the, in the law, and we have now to transpose it in France and in all the the member states. And this uh, notion of uh, energy communities is actually what we are promoting. The the idea that citizens local stakeholders can uh, get united to build their own um, uh, power plants and over their, their own means of uh, producing their energy. Uh, and these actors, these, these stakeholders at the local level, these local initiatives, they, they have to be encouraged because, of course, on in the electricity market in the energy market they are disadvantaged um, compared to uh, historic big centralized actors um, big energy producers and providers so they have to we have to let some room for these uh, local initiatives and the eu is doing that with uh, european directives uh, on uh, mark uh, and electricity market and uh, renewable energy so we are really happy about it and now we are really looking forward to to the transposition of these directives in the national laws. Um, and we are also willing to, to maybe uh, do some lobbying at the EU level if the member states are not ambitious enough uh, in this transposition, because the EU is really op uh, opening some opportunities and we have to, we have to benefit from it. Raimond, what's what's your thought on this, or maybe a bit more in general? Like, um, where do you see main challenges in in the work you are doing, and and where could like other cooperators learn from your experience? Uh, uh, there are some some uh, for example for us uh, or. Uh, the difference of, of our experience is we are not a bank. Uh, banks are important and ethical banks, but uh, the, the bank regulation of the central bank, uh, the European Central Bank or Spanish Central Bank, is very rigid. Rigid, uh, you understand it. Um, and we do uh, some uh, uh, kind of uh, financial products, uh, very flexible, flexibility solutions uh, to the, the, the that the, the social and solidarity organizations uh, needs. 
I think, uh, but my English is not uh, really well, but uh, for us, it's very important that the, the financial product uh, are very adapted to the needs of the social and solidarity organizations. Um, and it is the all uh, principal contribution to, to the social and solidarity uh, organizations in, in some regions of, of, of Spain. It's not a bank. We don't have a, a, a rigid probe uh, uh, and very uh, we can uh, adapt the our products to the needs of the social and solidarity organization. But, but you, you, so you say sometimes the I don't know regulation is a bit too 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 rigid and you have some uh, difficulties because you're you're not a bank but a co cooperative. So are there any initiatives that would be helpful for your situation or what, what would be needed to 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 make work easier for you? I don't understand uh, what. Uh... I was just um I was just uh, wondering if there is um anything like that could be done from the political side yes, e.g. Yes, from yes. the EU um to um to support well, socio ecological um yes, yes. cooperatives like for, yeah. for example we signed uh, last year an agreement of uh, with the European Investment Fund and it uh, for us is important that the uh, European Investment Fund uh, can uh, sign an agreement with organization with us. Uh, yes, not only from bank, we also with uh, cooperative uh, uh, financial cooperative uh, like us. That is really important, and I think is is a good contribution contribution to with that. The other is, uh, for example, we, uh, with our uh, law, which uh, regul in our organization is the cooperative law uh, of Catalonia, for example, no? And uh, for example, in France, uh, in, uh, an experience like us is not possible. We have a, a, a meeting with LANEF. LANEF is a, an ethical bank or a French ethical bank. And LANEF explained us uh, that uh, an experience like us in France is not possible. In Spain, uh, it's possible. Uh, that it's, uh, because of the uh, cooperative uh, law in, in Spain and in concrete in, in Catalonia is, is more flexible than the uh, financial regulation in, in France. And that's so, yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry, but, but the, the time is running. And but but we can see here that like uh, the different um, countries um, could like it's it's very important to to have exchange here and to learn from each other also re, for example regarding cooperative law I would have loved to to give Panos a, 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 a final um, um, moment to to close the session which which is about to finish I don't actually know whether this is happening automatically but I think there will be in the slide where you have to click on um, I would have loved to talk uh, with you, Panos, for example, about the question of the taxonomy, because you've said that there that uh, you're doing ethics, not metrics, <laughs> and the question whether, like, how if it's possible to really measure all these uh, social impact questions and so on. But I think time is running out. But just yeah. a few, like, a last sentence or a final <laughs> word from your side. Yes, <laughs> it's true that although ethics is important metrics for e, for the eu and for a design a new financial instrument is also important and into this context i think that the the eu and the eu taxonomy uh, that have been finalized uh, is a very good opportunity and a very useful tool for all us to 
to to speak the, the same language because it's also important because uh, when you do metrics you want everybody to speak the same language and when we say impact and social impact we want everybody to understand the same so uh, i will i think that it will be great for another session to talk about the taxonomy and uh, all this thank you very much it has been a great a very interesting uh, for me experience to learn from my peers and uh, the different uh, uh, challenges that they face and the beautiful work that they do. And thank you also for the opportunity and the, 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 for chairing this uh, session. Thank you very much <laughs> uh, to Alexander, Raymond, and Panos. Yeah, it was very interesting for me as well. Unfortunately, a bit short, but um, there are other interesting topics ahead of us. So um, I think we can can switch to to the next session now. And there should be a slide from our technical host, George Georg, <laughs> which which you're welcome to click on, and then you're going to be magically transferred to the next session. Thank you all very yeah. much. Also to the um, actually, I, I, there were no uh, comments or questions from the audience, so um, I didn't raise them, but um, yeah, I think we had a nice talk anyway, so um, take care. <laughs> take care, take care. Nice, Thank nice you. meeting you all. Nice Thank meeting you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Just a quick note, you cannot click on the link um, that you see, but you have to use the link in the chat. This is Gail, yeah, thank you very much. Host. That's an, that's an important <laughs> note, right? <laughs> so the, the link is in the chat, so you can click on the chat. Perfect. Okay. Bye-bye, you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>